I'm Tommy, and this is Dante. <clears throat> and you're listening to Twigging onto Twig, a podcast where we talk about Wildo's most anti-penultimate web serial, Twig. <clears throat> Dante has promised that he's going to do a Gorger impression this whole episode. <clears throat> so, in today's episode, we're talking about Lip Sealed 3.5 and 3.6. Um, since I am the only one speaking, I will go through the description. Uh, the audiobook description, which is usually a Dante thing. This is the chapter, 3.5, in which we meet one of my personal least favorite characters in the story. You'll be able to tell who she is because her voice is quite possibly the most annoying so far. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm breaking character just to say that her voice is not nearly as annoying as Gorge's. And to be fair, also not nearly as annoying as several characters we've seen before already. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Remember Dr. Patchy if you... Yep, I remember you saying he had a really annoying voice. I know you. He was very annoying. And w- uh, what is, I'm assuming this most annoying character is Shipman, Gladys Shipman, Skitter? Yes. Um, and she just sounds like a normal person who happens to say annoying things. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, Shall I go on to the next one? Yep. 3.6. Have you ever wondered about the strange creature called Gorger? All the time. Have you wanted to know what I imagine he sounds like? Well, I mean, you know because I was doing her imitation of him. (laughs) Uh, Anyway, uh, have you wanted to know what I imagine he sounds like? Do you long to meet this terror in the flesh? Me neither. But sadly, today is not our lucky day. At least he seems to be on the lamb side this time. For now. (laughs) Cool. All right. Um. Overall, I feel like there is more to talk about in these chapters. I feel like I feel bad saying, "Oh, there's not much to talk about in these chapters," because there's always a lot to talk about, and I feel like, yes, maybe, yeah. But like last week, or I say last week, last time, when was it? It was like less than it was a, week a week ago. ago. Really. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it wasn't a very action-packed chapter, and we went through it pretty fast and came out with our shortest episode ever. And I don't know if uh, if we're overcompensating uh, in reaction or overreacting, uh, but our notes are a lot more fleshed out this week than they were last week. So, and to be fair, that might also be part of why it was shorter last week. We didn't. We're not good at winging it, I guess. Yeah, I thought you know there's there's not a whole lot of plot points, so I can probably keep it all in my head and talk about the few things that I want to talk about. Nope. And then when we're recording, it all just goes... Proop. <laughs> Needs to be in black and white yes. in front of us. Yes. So, I don't know. Hopefully people liked our last episode. You know what? If you liked our our attempts at winging it and breezing through everything better than what we usually do, let us know. Because that would be know. interesting. And I don't... And I wouldn't believe you even if you did. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, wanna... Dive into the plot here. Yes. So, previously on Twig, the lambs are trapped. Rogue experiments and active defenses abound. Beset by enemies, the lamb tricks the monsters into thinking they are also victims of the Academy. Which they are. With the menacing Subrosa looming over them, will the lambs survive? Read the next issue of Lip Sealed to find out. That's a really good summary. You've been holding out on me. Why am I the one writing the <laughs> podcast descriptions? <laughs> You've got skills. <laughs> In Lip Sealed 3.5, Psy convinces the convict leader to take hostages instead of murdering everyone. The group enters the last few labs, and Psy heads into the lab with Skitter in it. I mean, sorry, <clears throat> the lab with Gladys Shipman in it. Gladys tries to put up a fight, but is quickly overpowered by Gordon. When they bring Gladys out into the hall, Sub Rosa reaches out to disturb her insides. When suddenly, Gordon, to size a shock and horror, shoots Sub Rosa in the face. A fight is about to break up when suddenly Glutton shows up. Sorry, I mean, sorry. Uh, Gorger shows up. Uh, oh, and also, Sai realizes that Gordon has the hots for Gladys. Lip Sealed 3.6 is a battle scene. Mary uses many knives, including a pair of knives attached to a wire, to plug Sub Rosa into an overhead light socket. Lillian provides some vials of flammable liquids, and Sub Rosa is on fire. Helen, with Gorger's help, finds an escape panel in the ceiling, and Sai tries to distract Sub Rosa heroically while the others climb into the escape hatch. 
Gladys explains who Sub Rosa is, and then the lambs notice that there are bugs on everyone, which means they're being monitored by a local supervillain. Sorry, I mean that all the monsters are being let out by Sub Rosa. They run. Dun dun dun. Yeah, it's a pretty cool battle scene. Yeah, it's dynamic in a way that I don't know that we've seen yet in the story. Mm. I mean, I guess the Mary and Psy. Yeah, with the fight. rolling the globe thing. Exactly, that yeah. Was cool. Because, I, because there wasn't one in Arc 2. Everything was much more um, chaotic. You know, less of two people doing chess moves. <laughs> the get funny thing the is, right... it was more of two people doing chess yes, moves. Yes, but same like. Time. More manipulating crowds rather than trying to manipulate everything to get into the right position. Yes. So not at all chess moves and more martial arts. Yeah, it was more of like tactics and like trying to manipulate the whole situation rather than like one on one. How can I defeat that person? That yeah. Person try to beat me. But yeah, this was this was this was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I suppose I made lots of notes. <laughs> um, starting around the beginning, Sai convincing the convicts to take hostages. Uh, that was a pretty fun trick. Mm -hmm. um, I liked that Sai's rationale was completely selfish, or at least he pretended it was. <laughs> yep. He said, you know, it'll save a few lives, but the real reason, I'm going to earn some brownie points with the with Briggs and the and the big shots. And uh, we won't have to replace all the people and start over with the uh, mole interviews. <laughs> we have done too many of those. We are not going back there. So, yeah, I also thought it was really fun that um, Sai pointed out, like he made a point of trying to make it seem like the convict leader's idea. Yeah, because it, it, overall, it's he he alludes to this more than once that the convict leader doesn't necessarily feel in control and he has to make him think he's in control mm -hmm. because otherwise he'll act unpredictably. Yeah. I, I kind of feel like this, this trope of, of convincing someone to do something by making it them think that it's their idea has just been like coming up over and over again. And all the things that I've been reading recently, like what? So I read, uh, the faceless old woman who secretly lives in your home uh, a couple months ago. Okay, which Sounds is one, terrifying. <laughs> it's one of the novels in the uh, Welcome to Night Vale oh, okay. universe. Uh, it's a very good book, actually. Um, and this beat keeps coming up, the idea that you want to convince someone to do something, you want to make it seem like it was their idea. So that was kind of like the first thing I read recently where it was really kind of like highlighted. Okay. And then I was reading Wizard in Glass which is in the Dark Tower series by Stephen King, mm -hmm. um, which I'm live reading in the Doof Discord, shameless plug. Um, Did not notice you were doing that. Cool. Uh, so I was reading that, and that same concept pops up again and again, and then I'm reading Twig, obviously, and it shows up again. So, like, I don't know if this is just something that is literally in everything, um, but the... I just feel... You, I don't know what it's called when you see something and then it appears everywhere. The Bader Meinhof, uh, is that what it is? I think it's the Bader Meinhof phenomenon. Yep. Sure. Uh, but that Cognitive definitely bias. is happening for me with this with this mm -hmm. idea. And so when Sai made a point of doing it that way, I was like, it's that thing again. <laughs> it's three beat. Oh yeah, three beat. That's that's how three beats work. <laughs> it's completely unrelated pieces of media. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's a three beat for you. Sure. Yes. <laughs> now I'm subverting it by broadcasting it to the world, and now I'll never see it again. Exactly. Uh, so the next thing that happens is the capture of Gladys. Um, mm -hmm. So we've been calling her Skitter until now, but now we find out her name is Gladys Shipman, and she is the niece of Dr. Shipman of the Disturbed Insides. Rearranged guts. <laughs> um, and... So I just really liked when they walk in and they're like, we're taking you hostage. And they're like, um, no, no, <laughs> no, we've got more important things to be dealing with than whatever this nonsense is. Yeah. They don't even care that there's a lockdown. They're like, well, we were planning to be down here anyway. So like, let's just keep on working. This just gives us the opportunity to do our work. And, uh, 
Gladys. Well, she assumes that there are a bunch of kids looking for a place to be safe. I guess she doesn't notice the spike-handed monster behind them That's until fair. it shows up. But yeah, she's but like, I mean, yeah, if you're looking she for someone, it, she's like, kind of takes it in stride. I feel like she's kind True. of used to it. And they did cut. Didn't they mention later that like she's been hanging out down here with her uncle since she was very young? Yeah, that's true. So she's kind of like Helen in in how she was raised down here. I wonder if she and Helen were like childhood best friends. That sounds terrifying, but I can <laughs> I can see I feel like that would have come up, but probably. <laughs> well, she Helen talks about how like her only friends in like one of the early chapters of a her, all of her her friends when she was young were the monsters down there. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, if there's girls running around down there, she could very well be one of them. That's true. Yeah. So anyway, uh, they capture Gladys. She tries to fight them off. Or she sort of half-heartedly tries to fight them off. Yeah, it didn't seem like she was all that interested. She's like, okay, well, I guess I, I'm not getting any work done here today. Yeah. So I, I kind of thought maybe she, like saw that she didn't really have a chance to Mm -hmm. fight them off and just kind of like was like "Eh, i'll I'll give it a token effort but like the decision's already been made i thought it was interesting that she tried to do that thing with uh like i don't know if she was even doing it on purpose she's like i don't want you to wreck my lab coat you can have one of my stockings yeah and and then then all of the guys start drooling over her and i was like is she doing that on purpose because even if she isn't it's working i mean she's certainly (laughs) I think she is. I thought she was as well. Um, and I, it was especially funny that Sai <laughs> made a point of this is not working on me, and then it worked doubly effectively on him. <laughs> yeah. Well, also, I, I thought it was worth pointing out, we were going to talk a lot more about uh, the convict leader, I don't remember his name, if he got a name, but just she the convict leader and his relationship with women's, women, and Sai says... You know, oh, you know, despite her being very young for him, the convict leader seemed interested. And it's like, well, I don't imagine that this guy has a very, like, I don't know how, what I'm, how I'm trying to say what I'm trying to say, but I feel like he's the kind of person who would not care about. She's very young. Yeah, age differences or anything sure. like that. You no, know, doesn't have the moral or ethical sure. compass there. Yeah. But anyway. Convict leader is enthralled. Gordon is enthralled. Sai wonders why everyone is enthralled, and then gets taken off guard mm-hmm. through his thoughts on the subject of her legs, which makes him just as enthralled. For anyway, speaking of looks, Gordon is apparently very taken by her. Um, and the interesting thing is, Sai doesn't even cl- like he does. He it takes him a while to come to the this decision that he thinks that Gordon has a crush on Gladys. Yeah. Because I feel like Sai, the way he makes him out to be, would notice something like that right away. But he didn't notice his own crush on Mary for still, so... I wonder, I feel like that crush is fading. We'll get to that later, but I, I, it feels like he's, like, not so taken with her. With Mary? Yeah. Maybe. I've just, I've noticed, like... And I wonder if it's because he was able to, because Lillian did the right thing and Mary did not in the previous chapter. But I, I, I sort of got a feeling that he's like his opinion on Lillian and maybe his attraction to Lillian has changed. There's a couple comments throughout there. Sure. You know, he says, "I'd rather be looking at Lillian's butt, not Gordon's, because it would bother Lillian." But <laughs> well, I mean, it's only been a chapter since. Yeah, but it's it just. I don't think... I guess he kind of said something similar in the very first mm. chapter when they're walking, or... Yeah, that he wanted to look up Lillian's oh, no, just to I think Lillian off. is the one who said that, not him. Lillian's like, oh, you're just doing that to look up. It's been a while. Either way, like, Sai definitely has a history of being a bit of a perv when he's around Lillian just to piss her off. Yeah. So, anyway... Maybe things are shifting in size opinions of Mary or Lillian or whoever or whatever. Mm-hmm. But the fact that Sai doesn't realize that he has a crush on ha- has been so obsessed with Mary this whole time. Yeah. And also doesn't notice that Gordon is very taken with Gladys until, until later. 
And then he's like, oh, Gordon is trying to rescue Gladys, therefore he must have a crush on her. And I'm like, oh, Mary, must is like how I, I must be rescuing rescue him. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, I, a few chapters from now, like who do you think is gonna um rescue one of their mission objectives and uh immediately fall for them? Helen. Obviously. <laughs> do you think Helen will be the next one? Yep. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. So no, I, Gort, Gort, sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. I was gonna say this is when Gordon turns on Sub Rosa and shoots her in the face. Yeah, and I liked what you, you wrote in the notes here that that this is Gordon essentially failing the game that they talked about last time. Cause... Uh-huh. Yeah, because like the whole point of everything they were doing was to like play the long shot and yeah. stay relevant and stay in control. And now Gordon's just turned around and been like, Ruined nope, that. throw this all away. And so Gordon is now in the category of Mary as mm-hmm. someone who is failing this game. And it's worse because Mary hasn't had to practice this game. It doesn't. Yes. But Gordon has spent however many thousands of hours, yes, learning what how the others are going to act. But I mean, I guess learning how the others act doesn't necessarily mean agreeing with it. The <laughs> spy assumes yeah. that the way that he thinks needs to be acted is the right way. That's true. But also, just the idea that Gordon's actions here just completely take Psy off guard. He's like Sure. Yeah. He's shocked. Psy is he's not as good at reading people as he thinks. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I don't think we've ever said anything like that before. Never. <laughs> I don't think this will be the last time we say it this episode. <laughs> he's not even good at reading himself. Nope. Anyway, so then Gorger shows up. Um and we'll talk about Gorger later in our monster corner. Monster corner. Um, but right now he's um an obstacle to the plot by being a literal obstacle. Says he'd arrived at the worst moment, blocking mm-hmm. our only escape route. And I thought it was interesting because that is kind of literally his job is to prevent things from escaping. Things yeah. From escaping. <laughs> I, I wrote this down in the our monster section, but like it it seems obvious now. Like we we've seen him outside of the bowels before, but it seems Have obvious. Have we actually seen him? I thought he was in the. He was uh, definitely mentioned. I thought he was in that all hands on deck meeting when Whiskers escaped. I think they mentioned him that he was going to get involved. Oh, maybe. But I don't think. I think this is the first time we've actually seen him. Well, didn't Certainly we see it's the first no, no, no. time he's been actually described? No, 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 no. We've seen him. No, that was Dog and Catcher. Never mind. Yes, we've seen Dog and Catcher. Yeah. But yeah, I thought it was, I mean, very obvious now seeing this, that Gorger was designed, or that the bowels were designed, and we'll get a bit more how those two are connected later on, but they are, uh, Gorger is designed to seal off the bowels as he moves through and stops things from getting through. Yes. Um, I picture him looking quite a bit like uh, the Kingpin in the Spider-Verse movies. I still haven't seen those. Well, just Google Kingpin Spider-Verse real okay. quick so you can... <laughs> yeah, that looks just about like right. Big square, his face in the middle. Yep. Yes. And he kind of reminded me of um, like the gelatinous cube from Dungeons and Dragons, mm-hmm. which just are like, like supposedly evolved further a natural habitat of 10 by 10 dungeons. <laughs> <laughs> and it also reminded me of those orcs in The Hobbit who run around their little caves with their hands mm-hmm. almost touching the ground. That's something that Tolkien talks about a lot, how orcs are like very simian and have the... the when they, they start moving at a speed, they, they sort of lope along with their knuckles on the ground. <laughs> interesting. Yeah. So Gorger is clearly Simeon and runs yep. along with his knuckles on the ground. Um, but yeah, so I thought it was fun. There was this thing that Psy thinks. He says, ticked off Academy Experiment on one side of me, ticked off Academy Experiment on the other side of me. And I was like, yes. And Stop. right in the middle of them, there is a ticked off Academy Experiment. Also, yes, the sum that you began to quote there. But yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, 
And then the other thing I wanted to say about Gorger is that he is on their side. He's a friend of oh, yeah. who know him. But he's still a problem. But he's still a problem, and he's not, like, he's still an obstacle for them to overcome. And, you know, he'd, he'd be perfectly, he seems to be perfectly willing to let them through. He just doesn't have the capability of opening space. <laughs> That's why he's happy sure. to help them into the... So, he, so you have to, like, back up all the way to the mm-hmm. end of the yeah. tunnel to... Not like, much not much uh, ability to turn around. Though, I feel like, from what we've described of how the bowels are set up, having only one gorger doesn't seem super useful, since it has, like, the central alleyway and a bunch <laughs> of, like, you know, you're, you're... If you have gorger walking down one hallway at a time, that leaves a bunch of other spokes. That's true. Accounted for. You really want a gorger on every, in every hallway, on every spoke. Yeah. Yes. Well, maybe. Th- yeah. <laughs> I mean, unless no, because that doesn't make sense. Because gorger is not the right size to just seal off. I don't know. It. Yeah. Maybe he expands to fit the shape of his container. So if he goes <laughs> out to the stairwell, he just goes and like, mm-hmm. become a big disc that blocks the stair. Gorger is a liquid. He's a gas. He expands oh. to fit the... Yeah, I was just picturing him flowing sure. down the stairs, but sure. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Uh, Sorry, yeah. it's late and babbling about Gorger flowing downstairs. I apologize. <laughs> anyway, you you like try thinking about butts. Yep. <laughs> uh, we'll get to that. So then we have the big battle scene, and um, as we discussed a few a while ago we're going to try to talk about some of the stuff that happens in the battle scene even though it's just like so this cool thing like, happened and then this cool thing thing thing, thing 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 and then it's done and then you're like ooh. Yep. so yeah but there were a few things i thought it was very cool that several of the lambs had some pretty spectacular moments in it mm-hmm. um mary at the beginning like everyone is just like petrified or something they're just not able to do anything and it's all on mary and it's just like mary it's all on you and Sai says you can do it and it's gonna be awesome i promise and he was right it is it that, awesome. <laughs> not just the you know thunderstorm of knives but the electric knife socket yes. trick is fun yes. too bad it doesn't plugging, do much. plugging the eye socket into the light socket very nice yep also the fact that Mary not only has secret knives all over her person, but also secret like wire. random wires and who knows what else. She has raided Lillian's supply of vials, presumably, and is also tossing vials around. No, Lillian was passing them to her. Yeah, I know. It's just, <laughs> I like to assume. <laughs> but, she... but yes, after, after this chapter, she's definitely going to grab a few of those and uh, have them in her, in her boots or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Speaking of Lillian. Her little vials were a pretty big deal as well. Um, one of them catches fire. Mm-hmm. One of them just like covers her and stings. Like Sai compares it to some of the stuff that he had to go through yep. when he burned himself. And I thought it was funny that Lillian was the one who said that she had no ideas. Like, it's like, why? Well, <laughs> how good would she be if she did have ideas? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And, like, speaking of the ideas, like, Sai yeah. was doing that whole roundtable, like, so, do you have any ideas? Do you have any ideas? How about you? How about you, Lillian? No? Okay. Who else? And I was like, how are you just standing around there in the middle of a fight, just, like, just having this discussion? Well, the, the, as they say, talking is a free action. So. Yep. <laughs> that seems like, yeah, the, the they're, they're mostly willing to let them sit and talk. Mm-hmm. And the convicts, too, they're not joining in. They're literally just, like, standing around, cheering Sub Rosa on, being like, oh, yeah. hey, uh, Sai is behind is you. No, he's to your right. No. Yeah. <laughs> well, it seems like, yeah, because the Sub Rosa got the convicts to deal with Gorger, and yeah, they do not see... This. Yeah, but they don't seem particularly keen on doing things. Yeah. So throughout this entire battle scene, you've got Sub Rosa kind of flailing about in the hallway, You've got Gorger just kind of standing there. Mm -hmm. You've got the lambs and the scientists next to Gorger also just standing there chit-chatting about what do we do about Sub Rosa, who's Mm flailing about. And then you have the convicts who are just also standing about being like, hmm, 
Good job, Sabrosa. You can do it. <laughs> and they're all just standing there. And this is still an epic battle scene, and it's really yeah. actually quite epic. I, mean, <laughs> I was in the convict's position. I don't think I'd want to get too close to Sabrosa either, or Gorger, or the lambs. That's fair. Well, I don't think they care so much about the lambs. Well, I figure they've seen some of what they can do. They they know that the lambs are they know that Gor- experiments. They know that well, they know that they said that and they also know that they were lying. But they I know think that Gordon's gun seen, is out of ammo. But they they've seen the way that they've like acted and killed and or it's, killed. It's only Mary who's actually shown them no a threat. And I I would argue that Sai fake killing that scientist to the convict, the convicts don't know it was a fake killing. That looked brutal and efficient and, like, super effective. I mean, it looked like he kicked him in the nuts and then... No, stabbed him in the... Like, just yeah. the, the, the efficiency and, like, the, the <laughs> knowledge, to me, sure. it seems... It, it's, you know, it, they're not just a bunch of kids. They're... That's true. I just don't think that hand. the convicts would see them as a threat. Or they yes. I mean, I don't think the they would see the lambs on the same level of a threat as Gorger <laughs> or Sabrosa, but I don't think that they would just dismiss them as part of the calculus of threat. Sure. They would say they're a threat, but we can take them. But they're not even bothering to take them. They're just like, ah, oh, we'll just let Sabrosa oh. kind of do her thing. Hopefully she'll flail in the right direction. Yeah. But anyway, by the time then- this is all finishes, um, Sabrosa is distracted enough that everybody can get up into the escape hatch. Uh, which isn't actually an escape hatch. It's a pipe for some of the security mm-hmm. fluid to flow through, which means that, of course, they're going to be halfway up. Trapped when it by... starts. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, Sai gets in last, in the nick of time, actually stepping on Subrosa's face as he climbs in. Which was very crazy. cinematic. Yes. Or um, very comic book yes. screen, or comic book uh, panel there. Yes. And then they have some more time for talking as a free action um, before they see that Gorger is retreating, and the monsters are escaping, and it's time to run. So off they run. All right, that's all it. All in all, and... a very action-packed and fun couple of chapters. Yeah. Agreed. That was fun. How, do you know how much is left to the arc? Uh, I just saw the table of contents, and it is not as long as some of the previous ones. It looks okay. like it is ten chapters and an epilogue. Okay. So we're halfway so, through. Yeah. Interesting. I feel like there's more to that thought than just interesting. No, I'm there. There is more to the thought. I'm just trying to convince my brain to send it to a place that I can think about it better. Um, because it feels like we've had the rise. We we've had the structure of an arc in a way here. We've had the rising action. We have we've had the climax. But I guess a lot of these arcs, or at least this is three for three, have had a s- relatively similar structure in how they're constructed of like rising action towards the middle and then a bit of a, a, a down to or a resting point and then another rising to a higher climax. Okay. This is kind of like the mid-season finale. Yeah, exactly. I like and that. I, <laughs> yeah, and I, I think it's something that I mean, we, we've talked about wanting to keep an eye on arc structure and how things are structured within the arc. Mm-hmm. So this is just something I've noticed, and I was wondering where this fell on the grander s- structure of the, the full arc itself, this chapter. And yep, and it's it, right in the middle, so yep. that, that lines up. Yeah. All right. Awesome. So, moving on to the world building. Yes. Just one random little thought. The first line is, Convicts, as it happened, smelled. Problem was, I was now the convict leader's new best friend, and he was staying close to me. And I really don't think that's a convict thing. I think that's <laughs> uh, kept in a lab, experimented on, and having rotting fleshes where they have big spikes sticking out thing. Yes. Yes. Like, there's not. Right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. I, I mean, but it is a funny line. But you're right. <laughs> so it's just a little unfair of Psy. Yes. To be... I mean, they've mentioned the black sludge coming out of where the spikes are yeah. embedded in their arms, so... Yeah, like pus rotting flesh arm thing is yes. not to smell good. Yes. Probably, I'm kind of surprised probably a prison would be um, a, a paradise cleaner. of beautiful fragrances by comparison. Yeah. 
I mean, I'm a little surprised, and I guess that might be what the project is doing or doing is, is contribute to, but I'm surprised these people haven't died of like sepsis. That's probably what that's probably something that they've deliberately accounted for. It's well, like, I'm certain it is, but yeah, it's like we've we're exper maybe it's like let's see what it takes to prevent a creature from dying of sepsis. And that's mm -hmm. really the whole point of their Or it's something that, that the Academy figured out a while back. And just like, oh yeah, we that just baked into all these experiments that'll do horrible things to a body. Ha, yes. Um, the other sort of world building thing that I noticed was um, when they were getting to the labs where Gladys and her mm -hmm. colleagues are, they mentioned like these are kind of like special purpose labs that were originally built for projects that became super weapons for each individual section of the academy. I missed I that was line. Cool. Yeah, that is so interesting. I'll read you the whole passage. Sure. The far side labs were larger, more comprehensive, and specialized. When they'd originally been put together, they'd been built for specific tasks. Many had even been put together for the super weapons that were now unique to each specific section of the academy. At this point in time, very few of the old experiments were still running. Interesting. So stuff from like the early, early days of the academy. Yes. So I'm sort of thinking like Gorger is kind of the super weapon of the bowels from what we've seen. Yeah. I don't think we've seen any other No, we've had the talk we've talked about um wow, well, I can't believe I'm forgetting his name, but the but Helen's creator Ibit. Uh, Ibit, yeah. Has a super weapon that he's designed and built. Sleeping I think, under, I think sleeping that... under the Academy. What okay, do you think yeah. it's there, was that his? I know that there was a super weapon. It was at his. The Academy, and I knew that Ibit is known for making super I think it was weapons in his spare his. time. But maybe it was explicitly his. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I thought it was interesting that in addition to having the big super weapon underneath the floor, which we're still pretending is the uh, bowels itself. Yep. Every Hogwarts house has its own super weapon, basically. Yes. So. I suppose the lambs are kind of the super weapon of the underfunded uh, psychology department. I'm pretty sure they would not, the psychology yeah. department would not agree with that statement. It's like, we can do better than this. Yeah, but they don't have any funding and they don't have any reputation. And True. they probably don't have any actual super weapon. So, yeah. Just don't let Sai hear that because if he finds out he's a super weapon himself, he's going to like. Let it get right to his head. <laughs> he'll be so full of himself, he'll explode. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, so, on to Monster Corner. Uh, entering the sound bit here with all credits to Danny Elfman and Megafire. Boys and girls of every age, wouldn't you like to see some things change? Woo. So we've talked a bit about Gorger already, you know. <laughs> we've talked a lot about Gorger. I think we yeah. said most of what we were going to say here. Yeah. No, we did. Um, I was just thought it was interesting the that the convicts were used or were Sub Rosa's specific plan to counter Gorgon. I mean, he's like mm -hmm. whether electricity is his weakness because I, I feel don't like that's think... a pretty major oversight. It would be right. <laughs> I, the other option is spikes is his weakness. Also, and that <laughs> feels like a very. <laughs> It's like, oh no, a spiky creature. Whatever shall I do? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm curious what because yeah, like like you said, electricity is an over a big oversight if that is the problem, and spikes is also. Like, but if you combine the two, maybe get electricity inside past his. Maybe his weakness is whiny bullies. Possibly. <laughs> Actually, that would be even worse if he's in the academy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and I also wanted to, to point out that the one of the convicts calls him glutton before Gorger. Yes. And that made me just quick think. Um, in French, uh, glutton is a wolverine. Okay. So I was like, oh, maybe that's what they're talking is that about. Be some, to like glutton. Sorry. Is it called that because wolverines are gluttonous? I think so. Animal. French, Nima, uh, Carcajou, oh, yeah. Goulot, Goulot, le glouton ou Carcajou, également connu sous le nom anglais de Wolverine, etc., etc., etc. Yeah, so its its scientific name is Goulot, Goulot, and Goulot is Latin for a glutton. So, 
I guess so. Yeah. Wolverines are so, gluttonous, and Gorger is a wolverine. Apparently, it is the most ferocious animal of the the Great North. I believe that. I don't actually know how big they get. I don't know either. 8 to 18 kilos. I thought bigger than that. That's pretty small. Yeah. It most closely resembles a large fisher. See, every time I hear about fishers, I think they're more dangerous than wolverines, but I don't think that's actually true. I did not think so. I think I think it's the other way around. Eh. It was because fishers eat porcupines and pet cats, so they're kind of the mm-hmm. I think man of the, the local different... wildlife. <laughs> I think the difference is that wolverines don't overlap much with um, human occupation. That's possible, too. So you don't get them as much. I did not know that wolverines... Yeah, wolverines live a lot further north than, yeah. than we do, so... I also did not this know that... Anyway. <laughs> yeah, I did not know that wolverines were circumpolar, either. I always associated them with a, a north as a North American animal. Yeah. Anyway, Very on good. to Sub Rosa. Sub Rosa. Yeah, so Sub Rosa, we got a lot of information about her here. Yep. We um, know who she is. Yeah, well, we know what who she was. Yes. She was the inventor of Gorger and the inventor of the bowels. And Jamie um, clarifies more more of an overseer. Or not yeah, Jamie, um, sounds, Gladys. Yeah, it sounds more of like not as as much of a like academy yeah. scientist, but as like an academy architect <laughs> yeah which also this is interesting because it implies that the academy is much younger than i kind of assumed it was mm-hmm. yeah or at it, least the bowels are a recent addition to the academy yeah which seems strange yeah like it just seems like but even then this would have been less than like oh, never mind like less than a generation yeah i was like this would have been long ago enough that helen would have been yeah. Little, but we don't know how old technically Helen is. And she could also, have been assembled as like, a... This lady who has become Sub Rosa may have been at the Academy for a long time before yeah. being... Uh, well, because it seems like it was fairly recent mm-hmm. that, that, that she died. Yes. Quote, everyone hated her and it got, it got bad. A lot of things that are wrong with Radham Academy today, they can be traced back to her. Now, of course, that is someone as part of the the power structures of the academy saying things that are wrong with the academy. So probably things that she thinks are wrong do not have a clear overlap with things that we think would be wrong <laughs> with the academy. So, like the academy was actually like this benevolent and um, philanthropic organization until this particular lady came to be involved in it, mm-hmm. and that's when it started to become dystopian and. Sure. <laughs> She's the one who actually um, um, caused the Academy to become affiliated directly with the Crown and the war. And she also started every single experiment on of course. personally. That's what it sounds like. Mm-hmm. Um, so and yeah. Also, she's the one who convinced Briggs to give Sai the most boring task that he's ever had to do. It was her last last breath before she died. Yes. Or disappeared or whatever. Yes. Um so I'm a little bit curious as to why Shipman kept her as he did. You know, on the surface it sounds like a kind of petty revenge type thing. Mm-hmm. Uh you know, he kept her alive, eyes open, mouth clamped shut, trapped with her brain mostly in working order. So she could see that, you know, what she worked for not being hers anymore or whatever, or like mm-hmm. all of that. Like, even if it isn't like just revenge, like like even if it isn't just like you made life miserable for me, so no, now I'm gonna make life miserable for you. Yeah. It still seems like if it's beyond that, it's only beyond that to the extent of look what you have done and reflect on it. I, rather than anything. I don't know, I kind of wonder. You know, I don't want to jump to the whole oh conspiracy angle that we've talked about, but especially yes, you. I, we, we all want to jump to conspiracy angles. Sure, <laughs> you know, he, if there is a mole in the bowels, Shipman is as good a candidate as any other because he has not yet been investigated. I mean, he's dead. Well, but yes, formerly yes, 
was as good. Um, and having this asset, this you know former spy or former overseer of the academy, as theoretically under your control as possible, uh-huh. is seems like a useful asset for people who are working against the academy system. You know, yeah. I'm not saying that that's that's that was Shipman's goal or motive or anything, but I can see that that could have led in that direction. Yeah. One thing that I was thinking was that might be involved. Sure. Is the the cover story for Shipman's experiment mm-hmm. was that he was trying to raise people from the dead and get answers. Oh, I see where you think. I think I see where you're going with that. So I'm wondering if maybe this overseer lady actually died a natural death. Mm -hmm. And he was like, wait a second, I've been sort of working on this idea and maybe I can get the information from her. Yeah. That she's been holding back from everyone all these years. Though more than once Psy or it's, it was pointed out how like she's meant to be a spy and like record the information, but her mouth is stapled shut and she can't. Yeah. Yeah. But I can see what you're saying. It makes sense that, like, oh, in the eternal jockeying for position and power in the Academy, it, having access to, like, all the information on the bowels would be really useful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The other thing we learn about Subrosa, so that was, like, the info dump from Gladys at the end, mm-hmm. but we also got an info dump from Jamie partway through. Watching her fight and watching the results of that. Yeah. And he says that actually she's two separate life forms. You have the woman and then the cocoon around her that keeps everything going. Um, it says the only way you can make her dead dead is if you utterly destroy the medulla oblongata or utterly destroy the heart. And I feel like there are other ways to make her dead dead, like utterly destroy the cocoon maybe. but Probably, but I feel if you're getting at that bit, <laughs> yeah. it's probably easier to just blow a hole in her brain. <laughs> So yeah, so I thought that was very interesting. So because this isn't just um, overseer lady, this is overseer lady plus well, life support. whatever shipment's previous project was, I guess. Yeah, um, and it actually is very effective because she is like you see her being you repaired, uh, like she she gets shot in the face, she gets set on fire. And then, like, a few minutes later, she's fine and doing better. Like, it's yeah. actively repairing her and actively... It's not just preservation, it's, yeah, it's, repair and improvement. Yeah, rebuilding, yeah. Which is what the the cover story was, right? It's mm-hmm. rebuilding after after death is destroyed, we try and rebuild, so... So it's interesting that, yeah, it does... Sai, cause Sai kept talking about how, oh, this wouldn't... This doesn't make sense, it wouldn't work, because there is... You know, if the, once the brain is dead, all the stuff is gone. So I don't know how. L- yeah, but I mean, in this universe, anything is possible. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I just thought that was super interesting. Um. I wonder if we'll get any more tidbits about that. If like this type of technology, or if this maybe maybe it's rolled out later. Yeah, it's like maybe they like kill off the overseer, but then like the cocoon survives and is crawls uh, away into the sewers and. Yeah. <laughs> Wraps itself around. Yeah. I don't know. Very fascinating character. And she spends most of this chapter just flailing about because she's been shot she's through blind. the... Yeah, she's blinded and brain damaged. And, yep. But by the end of it, she's uh, pretty much back to normal, I think. As good as new. Yeah, pretty much. Yep. So, let's move on to our characters. Yep, so Starting first, as, as always, always. Sylvester. Who, as always, always has lots to say. Yep. So we talked a bit about the manipulation of the convicts, but I kind of wanted to say, you know, he says enough hundreds when he's talking about, he's trying to get them to get the orphans, not the orphans, sorry, hostages. (laughs) Uh, Now think, each one of those people has family. They have connections, friends will ask about them. Each one has family, so the opposite of orphans. Yes, exactly. I would have been <laughs> lying if I said I wasn't touching on the comic leader's past and the circumstances of his incarceration. He'd been caught because his girl had had connections. I was doing his, my best to speak in a language he understood. And to me, that felt kind of heavy-handed. In like, on the size part? Yeah. And I guess it, it needs to be, but I feel like if this comic leader has like 
even half a brain, he'll be like, oh, this kid is using what I just told him to get me to think away or do something. Yeah, maybe. I think that what he actually says doesn't feel heavy-handed. It's no. His explanation of it that makes it feel heavy-handed. Yeah, that's, that, that's fair. I kind of... Because <laughs> he's just like... Distinction Think about them. all these people. They have connections. That, that would be pretty heavy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Um, I guess I kind of did not disassociate Psy talking to the <laughs> to the con- to the, the convict and to us as a reader. And also, this convict is pretty dumb. Yeah. He's not as dumb as he looks, but he looks really dumb. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. He probably needs to be heavy handed just to like get through well, his skull. There's a, there's a point later on, I put it in the convict leader section, but we can talk about it here, where um, da, 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 da. and she's making it so we can't get locked inside one part of this place, the leader said, as if I hadn't just implied it. <laughs> yes. It's like, thank you for outlining what I had just said, guy. Well, you made it seem like it was his idea. Yep. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I guess, yeah, that worked. Uh, um, yeah. Right. I actually really like these convicts. They're they're so dumb and in a way that it's like you're they're almost lovable despite the I don't awful know. Life. And I it feels weird to be saying this exactly. We don't know how much torture and abuse and torment they've undergone to put them in the state they are in now. True. Sai mentions, you know, these people have no like sign of hope in their eyes or their like soul. Yeah, that's that's fair. It's pretty grim. Yeah, Ugh. everything's so awful. No wonder Lillian said it was the worst case scenario. Yep. I thought it was fun that there were like several examples of him. I think it happened at least twice mm-hmm. where he like sat there thinking of what he should do next, and then realized that he could have done something if only he hadn't stopped to think about it. Analysis paralysis. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I mean that, that he 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 acknowledges that that's his main flaw when fighting, generally. Yes. Um, though he doesn't do too bad fighting Subroso. I mean, he doesn't really fight her so much as just like flails out of her reach. Yes. So he's not too bad at avoiding fighting. Yeah. In close proximity. And would have done better. And I, I think his idea was to do a bit more to her if the convicts weren't. Like, ah, uh, he's at your on your left. Oh, he's about to climb your knee. Oh, he's <laughs> yes. That he's going to jiggle help. your wires. <laughs> Friggin' convicts. Yep. Yep. Uh, so now we have to get into a couple of very important subjects, um, which are that Sylvester apparently hates cats. And I think that's clearly because he's named after one. Naturally. Um, so uh, what he says, I've got the whole quote here. Okay, perfect. As much as the younger kids at the orphanage liked to coo over kittens, I knew what cats really were. I was aware that they were one of the rare species out there that killed and tormented other animals to death for their own amusement, be they barnyard cats or house cats. One cat left to its own devices for a few days would chalk up scores of kills that it didn't eat, and not all were vermin. Cats were detestable, viewed objectively. And... Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, we all know that cats are devastating when introduced to a new environment. That is true. Um, but that's not their fault. We're the ones who introduced them. Oh, sure. <laughs> sure. But that doesn't change the fact that they will, you know, destroy the local bird and rodent populations in an yeah. area that doesn't know cats yet. Yeah. I think that this is another example of Psy being lacking self-awareness. Because oh, sure. All of what he says here, like tormenting for their own amusement, I mean, all we've talked about him uh, tormenting Lillian, um, you know, and he's, mm-hmm. you know, devastating the, the you know, tr- or trying to, um, not the <laughs> lives, but at least like to, to get inside and destroy like the the people he comes up against if and he has to. So One like, sigh left to its own devices would chalk up scores of kills that it doesn't eat. Yes. And not all of them are vermin. Yes. And they wouldn't be kills, but, you know, yeah. close enough. And you can say, Psy is detestable. You'd object. I don't think so. We've talked about that before. <laughs> I, 
I mean, viewed objectively in much the same way. Because the thing about cats is, all of this murderousness just adds to their charm. I mean, and that charm only adorable. exists because <laughs> this big. They'd be a lot scarier if they were lion-sized or... I mean, that's why lions are a lot scarier. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but ca- yeah. cats are murderous and also adorable. And Sai is murderous and adorable, but he's not really murderous. You know who's really murderous and adorable is Helen. Helen is all of these things that he says about cats, and that's why we like her so much. We haven't seen her be all that murderous. Yes, we have. Didn't she, like, disembowel someone, like, just a few chapters ago? One person? (laughs) Not even. She just... It feels on the scale of murderousness. Helen is, like, very high potential, but doesn't act on it much. Mm, Yeah, sure. Um, But I do think there's one other thing on the cat subject that we need to point out here, and how you directly called out Wildbo in our notes. (laughs) Uh, it does seem that Wabo does not like cats very much. So just putting uh, I mean, that this, out there. This isn't the first time I've seen negative statements about cats from a uh, Wabo protagonist. And, yeah, especially in you know, Verona. Yeah, well, Verona is a, a, a different story. Verona is the best. Um, <laughs> but uh, I've, I've definitely seen a few instances where it's just like cats. Um, I don't know. And I really like cats, as you know. Mm-hmm. So, um, so. Uh, if Wildbo doesn't like them, we can agree to disagree. But uh, in this side, he's like talking about how cats are awful, and I'm like, you're just uh, you're just um, making them sound even better. So, anyway, moving on. <laughs> sure, go for it. <laughs> moving on. The next subject we need to talk about is butts, um, and that ties in quite nicely because cats are famous for their butts. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> Just you, wake right. up, you wake up in the morning with a cat's butt in your face. We've all been there. Yep. Uh, so, um, Psy is sitting in this escape hatch, and he's kind of a little giddy, and he's like, following Gordon, he's like, oh, of course all I have to see is Gordon's butt. I really hoped that Sub Rosa didn't manage to activate the sterilization protocol we were presently navigating. I didn't want the last thing I saw before I died, a fiery or drowning death, to be Gordon's butt. Mary's butt? Maybe. Lillian's butt? Now that would be my pick. <laughs> and it's just like, this is just so delightful and fun. See, that, that this, is, also, this is just part of what I'm hilarious. This feels, again, like another of Psy's self justifications or lying to himself. Oh, where he says that Lillian would hate yeah. it if she died knowing he was staring at her butt. And that's that is the only reason I would rather be Lillian. Yeah. yeah. So, I don't know. Maybe Lillian just has a great butt from a, you know, size perspective. All right. (laughs) You've got no comment. You're just like, let's just move right on from that. Let's go on to the lambs. Get the lambs. All right. So, other lambs. Gordon. Gordon. Really well in sync with Psy until the moment that he is not. (laughs) That sounds like a pretty uh, average day with the lambs. Yeah, but yeah, no. Gordon is Gordon and Sai like are very, very coordinated throughout all of this up until up Gordon. until he shoots Sub Rose in the face. Yeah, yeah. And then we've already kind of touched on on the crush how, on go- the parallels between Gordon's crush on Gladys and mm-hmm. Sai's crush on Mary. Do you think that Gladys will be part of the Lambs moving forward? No. <laughs> <laughs> she might be a recurring character. I would not be surprised if she is. But the lambs, I think, are pretty much... We're seeing them as they are, potentially at their maximum, but I don't imagine that we're going to just keep adding characters to the lambs. Sure. I mean, Sai did it with Mary, so... Yeah, but that, as we said, that feels like that... It does feel like it's becoming a a, a large enough group to be... Yeah. Well, and also the first Mary being introduced in that first book kind of is like those stories like oh you have the group of kids doing their thing and then like in the first novel you have the new character who's being added in a sort of like the introduction to this group as you know in terms I'm, I'm not being clear there at all but just that the first novel in like a lot of like kids novels generally have or can have an established group of friends and then 
the new kid comes along and joins sure. the group, and yeah, from then on, actually, it wouldn't really make, to the to the narrative. It wouldn't make yeah. much sense for Gladys to join. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. Um, anything else about Gordon? Nope. Uh, just a couple things with Helen. Uh, Sai mentions that the girls are very pretty. Obviously referring to Mary and possibly Lillian. But... And Helen. Um, Helen says, thank you, Sai. The, the <laughs> cheerful voice. And I'd like to assume that's just Helen genuinely happy to hear that she is being successful human. Yes, that was very cute. Yeah. The other thing that I thought was interesting was uh, one of, bef- I think before he tells Mary to let loose, um, Sai asks Helen, are you able to do anything? She says, I need more time. And it's yeah. like, what are you, I know you, eventually it's the escape out the ceiling thing, but at first I thought we were going to see a unleashed octopus monster Helen. <laughs> she needs time to uh, Disjoint morph her. into her super suit. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Um. Yeah, I don't know that I suppose, need... I suppose what she actually did was more useful in the long run, but that would have been yeah. very cool. And I thought it was, I didn't put this in our notes, but it seemed like Gordon and Helen were the ones who had the best report with a gorger. You know, yeah. Gordon kind of just, I think Gordon's like sup mate to gorger. And, yeah. Uh, and Helen is the <laughs> one who works directly with gorger. Yeah. Well, I mean, Helen, as we said, grew up down here. Yeah. So she and gorger are like childhood buddies. Um, I assume that, I assume that Helen and, I mean, Helen and Gordon are the oldest, and I feel like they've probably been here the that longest. That makes sense. Have gotten yeah. to know them the most. Probably Jamie also and Cy have a decent rapport with him as well. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I did. I did like just kind of like the the. I I love when we have these few moments we've seen where the lambs are just like, "Oh hey, horrendous monster, how's it going? Good, what's up?" Yeah, <laughs> I do too. It was like, uh, was it? I think it was, again, it was Gordon in the previous arc, scratching the dog and catcher. Yeah, yeah. And like scratching dog's head. Possibly, yeah. Well, Gordon's got a soft side. <laughs> yep. Uh, next, we have Jamie, who I just wanted to bring up because he has hilariously bad timing with his info dumps. Mm-hmm. Like he's got all the great information, and he like tells people, and Sai is just like. Tell us that sooner. Oh, you were you were busy electrocuting her and setting her on fire. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, oh, Jamie, never change. I also and wanted to give Lillian a shout out just for being awesome here with her little vials and eating vials, even if she misses a couple times. Yeah, she put in a good show. Good job, Lillian. Yep. And we've, I think, talked mostly about Mary and her fighting with Subrosa. Yeah, with um, her knife wire and stuff. That and was all, pretty awesome. Yep. Um, I did want to point out that Sai thinks Mary gave me a look I couldn't read, which oh. you know could just be an expression, but it's coming from Sai. It's more than just an expression. Exactly. It, it it's interesting because again, Sai prides himself on being able to read everybody, and especially you know the lambs that he thinks he knows Mary well. And this is just another instance in not a very long period of time where Mary and Sai are out of sync. And Sai doesn't connect with Mary well. Yeah. I mean, see, this is this has been a recurring beat with Sai this whole story. <laughs> and not even the first time this chapter. Yeah. But I think it's... It's, m- it's especially true with Mary, I think. Yeah. Exactly. I think he wants to to think that he knows Mary, and he can trust Mary, and he, like, understands Mary, and I think we don't necessarily... That's not necessarily supported by the reality of the text itself. Yeah. It's like, the more he wants to be her confidant, the less... Mm -hmm. The less he has of, like, similarities or, or, Mm -hmm. you know, anything that he can base that on. Yeah. Well, that's not going to stop them trying. Nope. <laughs> I see you rearranged the notes on the fly. Lovely. Yeah, I thought this might be a better order to do things in. Sure. What do you think? I, I'm cool with it. Okay. 
So let's get on to non-lambs. Um, just wanted to talk about some of the convicts. Um, one of them is dead, the old guy. They give him the name Craig. And ju- they don't even say, like, you don't even see him die, I don't think. It's just like. No, it's just all of a sudden he's dead. All of a sudden, like, and you guys killed old Craig. And so I was like, oh yeah, Mary did that. Good job, Mary. And <laughs> Uh, we mentioned that there, Sub Rosa's measure against Gorger. Yeah. But the big thing I wanted to talk about just briefly is the origin story that we get for the convict leader. Absolutely. Because he goes into this whole story at the beginning of uh, 3.5 to tell Sai about what he got imprisoned for. And, you know, if we're, if this was an attempt to destroy any possible bit of sympathy that we as an audience could have for him as a character, Wildbo did a very good job. <laughs> really despicable, gross. Yes. And, like, despite, like, he goes through this whole story, he's like, oh, yes, this girl, and she was gorgeous. Well, like, and... can I, can I, first, he says, was a woman. Around the time I started being able to fight back, if someone messed with me, I was working on a factory floor, went out for drinks. Gaia picked a fight with me to impress his woman. I won, took my prize. So, oh, that's you know, already a... <laughs> yeah, already this this woman that he's went to jail for and over is not a person. It's a prize. Yeah, yeah. So in the end, he like says, or at least implies that like he was imprisoned on false charges because his girlfriend just like got tired of him, and her dad didn't yeah. like him much, and her dad had connections, and so he got put in prison. And it's like I don't believe him. I'm, for a second. I don't think the reader is supposed to believe him for a second. No. And this Sai is, doesn't really believe him either. No, this is, like, the cycle of abuse from the perspective of the abuser, you know, the the whole cycle of uh, you know, I'm going to do better, I'll do better, this, I'll be, I'll change, and then get the person back, and then fall back into the same patterns of abuse. Mm. Um, but yeah. Yeah. He, I did it, also mention in my notes, like, even though he is the worst, being turned into an experimental monster no. without due process is pretty not shit. the right <laughs> punishment, sure. Yeah. So yeah, we don't like him, but I think we can feel sorry for him. Like mm-hmm. he's a shitty guy and shitty stuff has happened to him. Yeah. Um anyway, moving on. Uh I wanted to mention that lady with Gladys who uh was captured with her. Yep. Just because we never even got her name. I don't think we got even any lines beyond like the initial bits. Like, the rest like we're taking you hostage. Uh, no, you're not. Yeah. Which the was rest, a great line, by the it's way. It's a great line. It's, <laughs> you know, I, don't, I think we talked about it earlier on in the episode, just this whole, it's great that she's just, oh, I guess this lockdown, that just means that we have time to do our work without being disturbed by people coming in and bothering us. <laughs> yes. So anyway, I hope we learn more about her, because she seems like a delight. Um, But so far, we don't have much to go on. So we may as well move on to the most important character. Skitter. (laughs) Skitter. Yes. Gladys Shipman, who, as it turns out, is not much like Skitter at all. Could be similar in terms of self-delusion. I mean, sure. And, I mean, using bugs for surveillance. And... Being the perfect storm of condescension and arrogance. <laughs> okay, so maybe they have some things in common, but not enough to warrant us continuing to call her skitter. No, so I think we'll, I think we'll abandon that. <laughs> but I think the biggest thing that we learn about her is that she is really annoying to the point that. Well, sorry, go ahead. No, no, that that's fine. That 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 can be the biggest thing we learn about her. That's <laughs> the fact that you know she has she's our info dump on everything we learned about Sub Rosa here. Yes. I think that's a little more important than her being annoying. Okay. But that's not something we learned about Gladys. Well, I mean, it, it, it establishes her as a character who has information. Okay. Sure. Okay. So we learned many things of importance about Gladys, one of which is that she's very annoying. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought it was funny that, like, Kimberly Dauber in the audiobook like description is just like she's the worst, and then Sai is like she's the worst, and yeah, like you were quoting 
Her tone rubbed me the wrong way. It was a perfect storm of condescension, arrogance, and sheer bitchiness. My skin crawled with it. And I feel like just the words she said were not really as, like, there was a bit of, like, arrogance or whatever, but not so much as all that, so. I think Sai is uh, lashing back mentally at the fact that he found himself caught unawares by being attracted to her and is Uh, pushing back at, like, oh no, she's annoying and awful and I could not possibly find her attractive. Yeah, that's interesting. I didn't occur, that didn't occur to me, but that makes more sense than any of my theories. So, <laughs> what were your theories? Oh, was... well, my theories were just that she was condescending and arrogant. And uh... oh, okay, <laughs> I just thought it was like just a matter of like her voice, like she just had a screechy voice, like more mm-hmm. so even than the audiobook does. Um, mm-hmm. But I think you, I think your your perspective, I think, is more fun, even if it isn't true, but has a very good chance of actually being true, so I like it a lot. Um, I also liked how cool she was in the face of all of this. Even as yeah. like they're, you know, oh you it's either you lose your coat or you're dead. That's kind of your choice. She's like, well, what about this other option? Or she's yeah, like, she's like do well, we have... I'm not losing my coat. I I like this coat. Um just like, do we have anything else to tie you up? She says, well we have a resin gun, but that'll burn. I don't feel like that's a good idea for me right now. Mm-hmm. She's so, like brainstorming out loud, despite yeah. being held hostage. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I feel like I feel I she's mean, the protagonist I, of her own parallel novel going on right now. Yeah, and I feel like if we were reading her parallel novel, we would probably like her a lot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. And I mean, we we know her background is interesting. Like she's grown up in at least visiting the bowels. I'm assuming she's not grown up in the bowels, but she's grown up going in and out. Yeah. So you know. We, we were going to hopefully see more of her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She, I in, mean, we haven't gotten rid of her yet, so no, we'll see her next chapter, I assume. Um, and yeah, like at the end, she, she more than anyone, I mean, quite a few of the, of these scientists have been just like demanding answers. Like what the heck is going on? Like the, the one that Sai pretended to kill was just spending the whole time being like, I don't understand what's going on. What's going on? Yeah, Lattice is doing pretty much the same thing, um, and Sai interprets it as just her being demanding and yeah. whatever. But it's just—it's very fair. As and she's like, "What the heck is going on? Who are you people? Like, why? Yeah, why are you in here? This is a lockdown. Um, you look like kids. I don't have time to be holding your hand." Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I assume that she's got. I don't think she's gotten all the answers she wants yet, but I think that we can assume that she's being filled in off screen, maybe. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I'm excited to see what happens next with this mm-hmm. character because she is very interesting. Me too. And cheating for spoilers real quick, she is in the character tags at the bottom of the page. That's true. Um so I mean I, mean, I don't that know actually know really what that mean a lot. <laughs> But she's important enough to that Wildbo noticed or noted her. Sure. Down. Yep. This is this is a, a character that's um in the dramatis personae. Yeah, exactly. Yes. If only it's, because when she gets killed off next chapter, Gordon will be pining over her for the rest of the book. For Gladys at the end as yeah. he runs his sword through the president of the Academy's heart or something. Yes. Because you know, at the end of the Dime Store novel, everything gets reset. Yep. So Absolutely. you cannot you, have you can't have any new uh, relationships that nope persist. It's like the old timey sitcom. Exactly. So uh, yes. All right. So you... that's the end of our character section. Yep. Anything? And normally we would do a discussion question, but we literally just released, I think, like two days ago. Yeah. Um our most recent episode. So uh, we're going to not do the discussion question this time. We will do it next time. And uh, just a reminder, we had the main discussion question was, do you remember? Nope. <laughs> oh, the cartoon character one. Yes. Um, What cartoon character out there uh, do each of the lambs seem the most like? Um, Which one are they also, based on? Yeah. We also had another one about 
uh, recommend to us the most interesting ways in fiction that deaths have been faked. Yes. And we also had a secret discussion question, which I was reminded of, um, in the middle of our discussion about coin a word for, I think it was being killed by your own experiment. I don't remember exactly. But Did someone answer that? Yes. Cool. So we'll, we'll discuss all of those in our next episode. Yep. Um, is there anything that you are reading or watching, right, or playing or whatever that you want to recommend? Um, these days, uh, I've been mostly playing Minecraft. Going oh. back to that, it's a classic. Love it. Uh, you? Um, not much, really. I've been playing stupid amounts of Baldur's Gate 3 for having a baby. <laughs> sure. It's a lot of fun. You're, you're teaching your baby the... Dungeons and Dragons? No, I play no lore. screens for him until he's two, at least. Okay. Just... And they, they very much emphasize that at the, the pediatrician is like, are you are you showing him screens? We're like, no, like good. Don't don't no screens. No screens for a <laughs> long time. No screens ever. Basically. Yeah. It sounded like. Yeah. All right. So yeah. is there anything else you'd like to talk about these chapters or in general? Nope. I am perfectly willing for you to run right into our scripted outro. Perfect. So everybody, thank you for listening. Um we hope you'll continue along with us on this very regular trip into Twig, which uh-huh. you can read along with us at twigserial.wordpress.com. And if you do, or even if you don't, please go to Wildbow's Patreon at www.patreon.com forward slash Wildbow and support him. That's how we can produce all these great stories and settings and everything that we've enjoyed. You know, not just actually stories and settings, but quite a bit of work done on things like... Uh, Packed dice and weaver dice, so pretty big, complex yeah, game systems. Pretty exceptional bits of um, hundred years lost. True, all that kind of that stuff. Yeah, done. yeah, all of that is from contributors. Uh, and we also invite you to leave our answers to our discussion questions in our Reddit thread or on the Doof discord yeah so you can reach us as usual at to twig podcast at gmail.com to twig podcast on the platform formerly known as twitter and i realized that uh our hosting platform is supposed to automatically post new episodes on twitter oh cool and it has not been doing that for like oh six months because i guess when twitter became x they like shut down all their apis or something And our hosting platform was like, well, we're just going to ignore that. Yes, we can't do that. So, I don't know. Maybe I'll try posting it manually, or maybe I'll forget. No promises. But um, I'm going to try to not completely ignore Twitter for the immediate future and see if people like that. I don't know. But anyway, you can find us at TO Twig Podcast on Twitter or X or whatever it is. Uh, We will, as usual, have our Reddit thread in r slash parahumans and our discussion thread in the Doof Discord. Kind thanks, as always, to them. And next episode, we will be covering Lips Sealed 3.7 and 3.8. Woo! So, biology fact of the episode. Yes, so we're going to move away from our recent trend of debunking memes and return to our usual staple of Cool parasites. For a given definition of cool. Uh, extremely awesome, rather than... Horrifyingly terrifying. <laughs> so today we're talking about the lobster mushroom. And it's I a should... tasty mushroom. It's a local mushroom to us. I'm going to pull up more information, because I only put a few notes. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, while oh. Dante does that, I can tell you from personal experience, they are tasty, and they look like lobster uh, flesh. <laughs> so, lobster mushrooms are not actually mushrooms. Uh, they aren't actually lobsters either, although you probably guessed that. Um, they're a parasite that attacks other mushrooms, uh, specifically um, and, Russula and milk cap mushrooms. And to be clear, by parasite, what Dante means is a fungal parasite. It's a fungus itself. Yes, it, it is not... a fungus. It's not a mushroom, but it's a fungus. Yeah. Um, and. So it attacks the other mushrooms and sort of coats them. And 
and from the outside in, tr- like literally takes over their DNA and transforms them into these lobster mushrooms. Essentially subverts the fruiting body of another yeah. fungus. So that's what, which a is what, which is. Is what a mushroom is. It's the fruiting body. It's what produces the reproductive organs yes. of a mushroom. So yeah, this takes over the entire reproductive system of another fungus, turns it into itself, and then spreads out into the wild to do more of it itself. Yes. So, yeah, so the lobster months, the lobster mushrooms, they, they look like by the time they're done, like the lobster mushroom doesn't look anything like the original. It looks like a lobster mushroom. It looks kind of like lobster. You can tell that it's a lobster mushroom but you can't tell whether it's, like, originally a Russula or whatever it may have been before. And in fact, even sometimes it will attack a toxic mushroom, and by taking it over and replacing it with its own DNA, it actually removes some or all of the toxicity of the original mushroom, replacing it with its own flavor and, uh, well, DNA and uh, self. So, yes. Very fascinating. Um, yep. You you wouldn't expect it just looking at it. It's like, oh, look, a neat mushroom, whatever. It's like, no, that is... A zombie mushroom, a essentially. A zombie mushroom. A delicious zombie mushroom. Yep. Have you had it? Some... No, I haven't, actually. Okay. I was just going to say, somehow or other, by the end of these uh, episodes, we're always talking about... Um, tasty mushrooms. T- tasty, like, these parasites were like, oh, these parasites are horrible and whatever. Oh, and have you tried them? They're delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Only reason I've been able to try it is because my cousin is a mushroom person. That's a mushroomer, not a myconid. Yeah. <laughs> he goes out and he's does a lot of, of mushroom gathering, and I've gone out with him a few times. It's That's awesome. In the woods of Quebec. Yep. Yeah. We did we did a thing a couple years ago, I think, at this point, where we just like booked a tour with a, a mushroom organization mm-hmm. and just kind of, they went for a walk and were just like, let me show you some of the mushrooms that we have in our area. And like the sort of things that you will take into account if you were to go foraging. And cool. we saw some lobster mushrooms there and he was telling us about this. I'm like, that is the coolest thing ever. And they didn't do any kind of collecting or cooking it for you or anything. No, they didn't because, um, it was a fairly well trodden trail, and all the good stuff okay. had already been taken. That's a shame. So there were a lot of very beautiful mushrooms, but not very many edible mushrooms. mushrooms. There were a couple of lobster mushrooms, but I felt it was worth leaving them there for people to admire. Also, like mushroom, like funguses. And I, I, I was going to say mushrooms because, like, obviously, fungi are vastly varied and not just mushrooms, but there's like. Stuff like mushrooms that grows in the woods that you don't even <laughs> think of, and like it's everywhere if you just look for them. Yep, it's like little little sticky Nodules things, and, and yeah, it's like you know, I would notice like, oh look, I need mushroom, or look those like bracket thingies on mm-hmm. trees. But no, there's like so many more of them, just Wrinkly everywhere. Orange yeah. guys and yeah, little like so cool. slimes and yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. So anyway, um, I do like learning about mushrooms. I should take some classes. Go do a become a mushroom person. <laughs> yes. So all of our biology facts from now on will be about mushrooms. No, that's not true. I have I have some interesting non mushroom related facts for future episodes. Yeah. But anyway, I hope all you right. all enjoyed, and uh, we will talk to you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I think that went well.